I'm gonna start pulling the engine on this car today, on the Camaro, on the Z. Um, what I'm gonna do first, before I really get started with anything, is first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the battery out. And then I'm gonna go through and drain the radiator, because I think this thing still has some cooling in it. So let's check that real quick. I believe it does. It looks like it's got some down in there. Can't really see it on the cam camera. But I'm going to go ahead and drain the radiator, okay, and I'm going to pull the radiator out just to get it out so I don't have to worry about it. I can look at it, see the condition of it, see if I need to replace it. Um, then I think the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my fuel can out of the way, get that moved. And then I'll probably pull off the cap and rotor and pull the spark plug wires off to get them out of the way so then I can maybe start disconnecting the headers. And we'll go from there. Um, we'll see what I can do and, you know, see what I can get done. So, but you guys don't need to see me pulling the, uh, the battery. I mean, I'll do that. Whenever you do pull your battery, though, always make sure to disconnect the negative first, then the positive. Because if you disconnect the positive first and you hit, let's say, the radiator, it will arc out. And you might burn a hole through your radiator or whatever you hit. You might burn a hole through. Be a bunch of sparks. Looks like fireworks. Really cool. Um, don't do it. It's not good. Um, <laughs> so we'll we'll go from there. So I'll start, you know, pull the battery and the, the fuel tank out of the way. And then I'll start showing you guys other stuff as I'm going along. All right, I got the battery pulled out. So I got some room there. I pulled the bottom hose on the radiator down there to drain it, and I had a bucket down there to catch the coolant. And I pulled the top hose off. When you pull the top hose off, you have to watch because you have a thermostat, so you are gonna lose some coolant there. The next thing I'm gonna do is, I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this top fan shroud off. I'm gonna pull that bolt, that bolt, that bolt. I'm gonna see, I'm also gonna pull this bolt right here. So then I can pull this off and then I can pull this top cover piece off and I'm pull, pop that off and I'm gonna see if I can get this fan shroud off. I might have, I'm actually probably gonna take the fan off first because you got four bolts that hold the fan on, on the front of it. If I can show you guys right there. That bolt, these four bolts, I'll take this fan off. And then I can get this fan shroud, fan shroud out, this top off. To give me some more room to get in there um, when I pull that off the radiator will probably become loose too um, before doing that I'm actually probably gonna go through and disconnect the two transmission lines that line and that line down there and disconnect them so then I can get the radiator out when you disconnect the transmission lines you're gonna leak coolant or not coolant I'm sorry leak transmission fluid so make sure to have a catch can there you might want to move your catch can from your radiator coolant so you can try to keep your coolant if your coolant's still in good condition you can reuse it if you want i'm going to try to keep my coolant separate so i can use it for other things besides maybe this car i might reuse it in or i might use it in an old tractor i have um so we'll go from there okay so what i got done so far and i'll show this to you guys i'm gonna go do some lunch is i got my trans lines disconnected Okay, and I started, I took off one bolt there and one bolt there so I can push that back. And now I can actually easily get in there and take them off. I'm gonna pull, before I start doing that, I'm gonna pull this radiator out. So I mean, I got the upper hose disconnected, the bottom hose disconnected and all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. You got now just these three bolts, which are tight. So I'm gonna take them off and this top cap should lift off and I should just be able to lift the radiator out. Um, what I'm gonna try to do is actually I think I'm going to probably listen to some music when I'm doing this with a pair of headphones on. And I'm going to try to set the camera up so I can record it and see maybe fast forward through doing it. Um, and see if I can do that or not. I'm, I'm not very good at doing the editing stuff for the videos. So I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm working on it. I'm learning. So I'll see what I can do for you guys. Um, once I get the radiator out, though, I'm going to go through... And I'm going to disconnect these lines for this uh, AC compressor. And I think I'm going to go through and take this compressor off just so I can get it out of the way. And then I can get easier access to the headers 
and I'm gonna probably just disconnect all the lines for that. So I'm gonna have to figure out all that when I put the LS engine in. So I, I do plan on keeping AC in this car. Um, so I got a lot to figure out with that because the ECM style I have, I, I, I have, oh, yeah, that'd be right. Um, anyway, the ECM style that came with the engine, I need to use a climate control computer, which is part of the controls inside the car for running the fans for it. So I was reading on that. What some people say to do is to run with the fan switches run the existing in the car and then just wire it the power to turn the compressor on to engage the clutch run a wire from that over to the relays and put a diode in going back to the ecm so then you don't put reverse polarity into it and that's what i think i might end up doing to make the fans run on high i think it is when the ac comes on because i want to try to keep the drive by wire set up on mine because I want to set it up with cruise control. And I'll go through and talk about that. I found somebody else. I'll, I'll uh, try to give you the links later on when I get to that point of the guy that did all the relays and figured that all out for the throttle. Not throttle. I'm sorry. For the cruise control using a OEM style switch. So we're going to try to add all the bells and whistles. This doesn't. The only thing I got to figure out is how to make the tack work correctly with it. So we'll figure that out when we get to that point. Um, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Just have to see what I can do. Well, anyway, um, I'm going to go do lunch. Oh, back to the AC stuff before I get off topic on that. What I'm going to do before I... I'm going to take the pump. I'm going to break the lines loose on the pump and all that. And I'm going to see if I can break these lines loose here. And if I can break these loose, then that's going to be good. Then I'm going to also break break it all loose there so then i could take this dryer out um when i put the ac back in i'll probably end up putting a new dryer in so that way i know the system will hopefully work correctly and i can have ac in this car too which would be awesome um the other thing is with this setup when i do the ls i plan on keeping the th350 so i'm going to get rid of the kick down cable which means for passing i will have to shift it down manually i believe for passing to get a passing gear which is good and bad um it to me it, it's not going to affect the drivability of it because i want to keep this transits in this car um along the lines with also doing the budget build i'm going to try to keep that going without having to buy the 60e or the 80e and run that um that just adds more cost to it and more hassles and i gotta buy a transmission member i gotta do this i gotta do that and da, 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 da. so well anyway i'm gonna go do lunch and be back shortly figure i'll show you guys uh what i've gotten done so far hopefully the time lapse is going to work out well for you um i got the top cover pulled off i got the rat eater pulled out and i started taking off the ac lines i disconnected the two from this side on the condenser and got that one there to where it goes to the pump i disconnected the line from here so that way i can put it on my box of parts and get it out of the way for the time being um there's no pressure in the system so i'm gonna end up probably putting a new dryer on here when i put it back in i'm hoping to make it all work with the newer style compressor and i'm gonna upgrade it to the current freon instead of the r12 stuff you can still get today um so my next thing i gotta do is find a wrench to work that because that's bigger than an inch so i'm gonna have to figure that out um See if I can get that broke loose so I can get this one line off here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and find that wrench. And I'm going to see if I can get this broke loose here so I can get this dryer out of the way. 
and uh, that way I can just move it and it'll be out of the way for the time being. So that way I can have some free room and makes it easier for when I'm gonna be cleaning up all this and painting this in here. Um, I do have to, you know, clean up and maybe repair my bottom radiator support because it is kind of rotted. So before I start doing that, I'm gonna go through and try to get all the rest of the lines off and I'll probably pull this condenser out so that way I can look at it better, maybe clean it up, paint it if it's not in bad shape. So we do have some repairs to do up in here. So I'm gonna go through, once I get the engine out though, go through, clean this up and clean up everything else up under here and try to paint it and make it look better. Um, so we'll see, but I pulled the fan trout out of the way. As you can see, that's, you know, now I could slide that forward and drop, pull the water pump pulley off, drop the belt belts off, maybe. Um, we'll see if I probably pull it forward a little bit more. Just watch your fingers. There we go. Get that out of the way. I'll set that in my box of parts for now. That way I can pull these belts off just for the time being to make it easier. Put them in there. So what I can do is I can, I can do a couple different things. I can leave the power steering pump hooked up with the lines or I can disconnect the lines and all that and just pull it out with the engine, which I might do. Um, so we'll figure that out when we get to that point. But I am going to pull this compressor off to get that out of the way to make it easier to get the headers and all that stuff. So. All right, I'm going to put put this down for a few minutes. Um, actually, let's see if we can show this here. There we go. See, this is why I was having an issue when I was trying to start it. You know, cranking over slow. You can see the starter cable's been hit and worn and somebody did a, a fix on it before I got it, which isn't the best fix they tried so so we're gonna replace that cable while we're at it so i think the junkyard engine actually has a new cable on it so we're gonna see how much of that we can keep and use so yep all right with the dryer i got the big nut up up here disconnected i got them two lines off took that one off that one off then there's one bolt straight in here which i'm going to take off which is a 3 8 bolt so that way i can pull this whole dryer out of the way and get that out of the way it gives me a little bit more access i plan on on replacing the dryer when i put it all back in because i got a feeling this one's probably shot um i might end up also replacing the uh inside piece with that um because when i look at it the nut here is broken right there it's missing a chunk and this whole ferrule's damaged so i'm concerned that it may not seal properly when i go to do it so when i have everything apart i might pull this out later on and i'll show you guys how to do that um i think to do it i'm gonna have to pull this fender liner out i think to do it but that's going to be something later on. That's not what I'm doing now. So I'm going to pull this dryer out of the way. And then I'm going to go through, take that bolt off. Then I'm going to go over here, go over there, and work on pulling the AC pump. So... <laughs> guys i got the ac compressor out of the way now which is good i took it out because the header bolts actually look like they use studs going through the headers so i'm gonna have to take these mounting brackets off here so i can get this header off so i'm probably just gonna pull the headers off so when i pull the engine out i don't have headers to swing around and get in the way so i think i'll just drop them off now it's a couple of bolts 
be easier, I think, for me to drop them now. I can leave them in the engine uh, bay for now while I pull the engine out. I'll make my life just a little bit easier to have the headers off. Um, the other thing I might do is maybe I'll pull the headers loose and I'll just crawl under the car and take the bolts off the flanges so then I can pull the headers out. So, yeah, let me go back to work on this and hopefully a time-lapse video is working good for you guys. I'm trying to make it easier so you guys can watch me pull this engine out. I got the engine boom finally in place to pull the engine. I got to pick it from the side, unless I want to take off the front bumper because my boom's not long enough to go in. So I got to pull it from the side. And then I ran into an issue because when I had, was trying moving the boom back, I didn't have enough length to bring the boom all the ways back and clear the car. So I had to move my one toolbox. Good thing it's on wheels. So I had to move it out of the way. So that way, hopefully I can pull that boom back here. I can set the engine down, move the engine, move the boom, and life is good. So I got stuff there that I gotta put away anyway, back in my shed and stuff like my weed whacker, my power washer hose, so. And I gotta box up some charger parts and stuff, so. But at least now I can hopefully pick the engine and I won't run into an issue with clearance. I don't know until I get it up and see. So we'll figure it out. If anything, I'll set the engine back down in there and uh, put some wheels on it, I guess, and push it forward and pull the engine out and roll it back in, I guess. Be about the only other option I got. So let's see if I can get it pulled out. Alright guys, engine's out, yay! I got the transmission supported on some blocks so I can get my jack and take the lines off. I'll put my jack under there and take it off the blocks and I'll probably pull it out. Um, so that way I can go through it and do it. 
and look at stuff and check stuff. So that's out. I got the engine out. And one problem I kept having each time I kept moving it was I kept getting coolant out. So make sure to drain your block. I forgot completely about draining the block. There's usually plugs on the side of the block um, right there. So you can drain the coolant out of the block. So I forgot about it completely. And um, as you can see, I was dealing with coolant the whole time. But I got the engine out. So that's half the battle. So now I just got to get a little stand for it so I can put it on it. But I wanted to get it out of the car so I can do stuff. My garage is a mess because this is sitting where my toolbox was. So, oh well. But I got it out now. So, that's half the battle. I pulled the distributor out to get that out of the way. Um, so then I could take it out. It helps have a big pry bar so you can pop the transmission sometimes away from the engine. I had to do that with this. Um, so, but it's it's out now. So now I can go through, I can clean this stuff up and clean up in here and clean these up. And I can, might look at this and pull this out and put a new condenser in it maybe, or inner piece, uh, whatever. Not, it's not a condenser, because that's the condenser, but whatever the inside piece of this is called, because that one line there is broken. I don't like that. So, but I got the, uh, the engine out, finally. So, there we go, y'all. Hey, subscribe, like, comment. Um, if I did something wrong with the engine removal that you guys can think of, besides not draining the freeze, the prolong the blocks, that'll let the cool one out. Yeah, I forgot about that, but if you guys can think of something else that might have helped, would have been good, tell me. Um, I wasn't going to pull the front of the fend the front off, so I, I don't want to disassemble the whole car. You know, I know some people are going to say, ah, oh, I'll just pull the whole front clip off, it comes off, four bolts, it's off, and yeah, no, nah, that's not what I want to do. And I didn't want to pull the K-member out and drop it down. I did that on the Charger. I, I don't want to get into doing that with this guy. So it wasn't part of the uh, plan on this. I mean, in the long run, maybe I'll do it later on, I don't know, but... I know if I did that, I could have put the uh, put the new LS in there, put the engine, put the trans on there, roll it under there, and bolt it up. But I just don't want to get into doing that. So, anyway, hey, like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Ask me questions. If you guys want to know something about pulling itself apart, ask me, and I'll try to answer it. Um, this guy over here wasn't hooked up, just to be clear. That's a charcoal canister, I think, or something. I don't know. It wasn't hooked up. So. Hey, thanks for watching.